And now that I have found the best low budget Jurassic Park ripoff of all time, I will never bother with any of these dinosaur trash movies ever again, ever again, ever again, ever again. I thought you were dead. My death was greatly exaggerated. Jurassic Park continues to be the most influential piece of dinosaur media ever, which on the good side has gotten many people into paleontology, and on the bad side has led to a sea of rip-offs trying to cash in on its success. Which in this case means that the poor Jurassic, a geological era like every other geological era, with clearly defined boundaries and clearly defined faunas, has been completely tainted thanks to the association with titles like Jurassic Attack, Jurassic City, Jurassic Dark, Jurassic Dead, Jurassic Galaxy, Jurassic Game, Jurassic Predator, Jurassic Extinction, World, Jurassic, Prey, Jurassic, Prey, Hunt, Jurassic Island, Jurassic Predator, Extinction, Jurassic, Jurassic Hunt, Predator, Jurassic Attack, Jurassic, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, Jurassic Shark, Jurassic School. When you look at these covers, you might notice some recurring themes. This bulky big tooth T-Rex that looks like Jurassic Park's T-Rex crossed with King Kong's V-Rex is a toy from Papo and this fucker is everywhere. Even educational dinosaur books are no longer safe. Everywhere I go, I see his face. Stop using the Papo T-Rex, I'm tired of seeing it. So I decided that today I'm going to review specifically those Jurassic Park ripoffs that have a Papo T-Rex on the cover. Except Jurassic Games, because I already reviewed that. And the actual movie has an amazing T-Rex model that is probably the best Tyrannosaurus model in any movie, period. So maybe these ones will also turn out to be pleasant surprises. Jurassic Galaxy aka Jurassic Planet is the most disappointing dinosaur movie of 2018. This movie is directed by the Condelic brothers, who have an odd filmography, but they're not having as much fun with this concept as Ryan Belga did with the Jurassic games. Our protagonists crash with their spaceship on a planet that is just a boring American desert, although they at least occasionally try to make it look cool by putting moons and floating islands in the background. Even though other scenery makes you go, how does that rock have the exact shape of a T-Rex skull? It's never shown again. So it's not like there's some kind of sentient dinosaur race carving these out of the rocks. I guess it's just an amazing coincidence of natural formation. Or what the fuck is up with this shot, where they have a superimposed Eocene horse fossil from Messel? If that's supposed to be a giant skeleton they are walking inside of, well, first of all, the effect looks like shit, and second, why not a dinosaur skeleton? How did the editor even find this? Was this horse just the first result when you Google fossil skeleton? Depending on your mood, you're gonna find the cheap effects either endearing or distracting. Like for example, they have this little drone and boy does it look bad when they digitally embed it into a shot. Or try to make it look like it's exhausting hot air, but hey, at least they tried. And once you see what the other movies are like, you will realize that this is not as self-evident as you might think. The human characters are also boring, like our lead, Discount Rick Flag from Suicide Squad, and discount Luke Skywalker from The Last Jedi. But they're not why I'm watching this. I'm here for the dinosaurs. And they're blue. Just straight up blue from Jurassic World. I know the raptor designs of that film franchise are so ubiquitous in the media that even the United Nations use them. But including even blue stripe in the design feels like they're being extra provocative to Universal. Disregarding the obvious inaccuracies, this is actually one of the better models I've seen in these trash movies. The CGI still sticks out like a saw thumb, which to me seems to be more an issue of the lighting. Same reason these pteranodons look so shitty. As they meet up with more survivors of the crash, a badly animated volcano erupts and causes a stampede of... Raptors? The trampling sounds and the fact that none of them are worried about getting eaten makes you think this was supposed to be a herd of big herbivores, like Triceratops or Parasaurolophus or whatever, but they didn't have the money to make any additional models. So we get a herd of completely weightless raptors badly superimposed on the screen. Almost as badly as these pteranodons. Or this raptor! Honestly, with every new encounter, the CGI gets worse and worse, and they're not even trying to make it look like the characters are actually interacting with a real creature. Then they start fighting each other, because we gotta have the obligatory tension in the group. But at least they have an actual excuse for it. It's the planet! It's got to be! It's doing something to us! I think the radiation belt on this planet might be messing with us. It's 
place turns you into a savage. I am surprised this movie is not trashy enough to have them turn actually into dinosaurs. It is trashy enough to suggest that this is a planet on which dinosaurs did not go extinct like on Earth, because clearly a completely alien planet would follow exactly the same part of evolution as Earth, and create aliens that happen to look exactly like what the general public thinks dinosaurs looked like. Speaking of, it's time for the T-Rex to appear, and while it's definitely Jurassic Park inspired, the spikes on its head make me think they were actually trying to make it look like the Papo Rex. Then they get attacked by raptors, but get saved by a caveman with a torch. Tinting the screen blue does not fool anyone into believing this scene actually takes place at night, especially when you can still see the fucking shadows. I know you're trying to go for a stylistic thing like Mad Max Fury Road, but you gotta crank the contrast way up to make it look as good as that movie. Also, when I call that guy a caveman, I mean he has been stuck on this planet for so long that he's literally turning into a stereotypical caveman. Me. Follow. We can all get off this planet. Off. This planet. Rich Comb. Rich Comb. First food. We then get those character interactions that basically set up which character will survive the end of the movie. You're pregnant? About three months. Doctor said it'd be a couple months before the cancer completely took me down. When my time comes, I hope I leave a good man. I'd rather die a good man. And surprise, the crazy caveman is so crazy that he killed his crewmates because just like Jurassic games, we have to sidestep this awesome dinosaur premise to focus on how man is the true monster or some shit. But then it turns out he has actually regressed into something much more horrifying than a caveman. Gift. Gift. Pretty. Pretty. You <laughs> will be the queen of rats. You're gonna let me go, right? After you find the shuttle, you can get off this planet. And leave Queen all alone. You stay here with me, my queen. We rule this world, my love. He has become a Twitch mod. You sick? I'm pregnant. We have baby. Great have child! Thank you, old man! Great have child! <laughs> Bad girl. Great have. Child! Rich make food! Thank you, old man! Okay, I ha have to give it to this actor. Evil Simp Caveman is the most embarrassing, cringy role I have ever seen in one of these movies. But he plays it 100% straight, and I love it. I think he's my favorite character. Ah! Red King of Wolves! Meanwhile, the rest of the team gets attacked by badly animated raptors with badly animated CGI blood spurts. Then they need to hide from the raptors as the T-Rex approaches. At first I thought the T-Rex looked so small in this scene because they just suck at scaling, but no, it is supposed to be a baby, they just use the exact same model as for the adult. What is this, some kind of nano tyrannosaur? Luke Skywalker gets hurt and has to stay behind. Rest here. <sighs> Taking this view. Oh come on, the one time you acknowledge the nice view and it's not one of the shots where you have the planets or moons in the background? You are a good man. When my time comes, I hope I leave a good man. You are a good man. I'd rather die a good man. You are a good man. That's like poetry, so if they rhyme. Wait, what? The, the raptors have no shadows! Now the animators are not even trying anymore! It really feels like the longer this movie goes on, the worse the animation gets. Just look at this shot of the space shuttle. Red! Oh, now it's getting hammy. No. As Rick Flag and the caveman fight, they are suddenly circled by raptors, but they're polite enough to not attack so these two can have their one-on-one -on -one duel. This movie really makes the raptors a bunch of pushovers, and again, the attempt to make it look like they're interacting with the humans looks just pitiful. Then the T-Rex eats the caveman and poses for the poster. As it turns out, the shuttle has only a single seat, 
So the pregnant woman gets into the shuttle while the two remainders pose for what is supposed to be an epic shot. But looks just like shit because again, the dinosaur models don't even have shadows anymore. Also, where the fuck do all these dinosaurs suddenly come from? This is Miss Gale Zahn, sole survivor of their ship Galileo. Oh no, don't you try to make some dark, sad, suspenseful ending after how shitty that scene was. Also, what the hell, the movie's already over. That final confrontation was like 3 minutes at most. It's like they suddenly fast forward throughout the ending. Well, if the movie ends so abruptly, I guess this review- Raptor Ranch aka Jurassic Dark is the only movie in this video with a runtime of more than 80 minutes. That would make you think it's more of a real movie until you see the awful CGI Raptor and T-Rex in the opening and quickly realize it is not. Right from the start we see an old guy who keeps dinosaurs in his barn behind a terribly animated electric fence. And one of them is an ugly blue spiky ferropod that reminds me of some shitty dinosaur I think I saw on the internet somewhere. I don't know, I haven't watched the movie it's from. I know the movie is called Raptor Ranch but I'm still surprised that they're immediately revealing all the dinosaurs and the guy running the ranch. If you're not leaving anything for us to look forward to, well then I'll just rush through the first act as well. We have a very diverse cast of protagonist stereotypes. A girl who has to work in a sleazy gas station but has higher aspirations. A douchebag college bro. A shy nerd. A redditor. After you, my lady. A sassy gay black singer. A goth girl. And a slutty blonde. Oh yeah, and we also have two special agents investigating the killings that are happening around this small town in Texas. The teeth marks indicate a very large predator type creature. By creature you mean like a dog or a wolf? Sure, if the dog is about 10 feet tall. That doesn't look like any dog print I've ever seen. Well, that doesn't look like anything I have ever seen because I cannot see shit. How hard is it to make a fake dinosaur footprint? They're also taking a DNA probe. The closest match was that of the Dromosaur theropod. Say that again? Better known as a Velociraptor. How would you know that it's Velociraptor DNA? It's an extinct animal. There is no DNA of it. If we somehow found a DNA trace of it, we would only be able to say that it's from an unknown animal. But we wouldn't know that it's specifically from a dromaeosaur. This is almost as stupid as carbon dating a diamond ring. Alright. Give me the afternoon. Hasn't been around since the Cretaceous period. That's over 75 million years ago. Wait, this is incredible. You got that right. Wow, you sound completely shocked by the idea that there's a fucking Cretaceous Velociraptor out there. At night, all our protagonists congregate at the gas station, but they're out of gas, so they go to the old guy's ranch. Wait, the ranch is actually called Raptor Ranch. There have been kings going on for who knows how many years. How has nobody investigated this earlier? A crack. A kraken. Oh... A Kraken Ho sauce? A Kraken Ho sauce? I think there's only two reasons they picked Acrocanthosaurus for this movie. First reason, it's a dinosaur from Texas. Second reason, this joke. Come on, you gotta come check out these Kraken Ho sauces. Well, I would give this movie credit for actually getting the size of Velociraptor right, but those shitty egg props make me think they're supposed to be babies. And those weren't no chickens I've ever seen. Yeah man, those chickens had teeth. And no feathers. The Redditor turns on the lights and opens all doors even though there's a switch literally labeled T-Rex. I like how one silo is labeled Danonychus and the other is labeled Raptors when both look exactly the same. What's even the point in giving them different labels? When he turns the lights back on, the Raptors suddenly lose all sense of sight and sound because the girls are still right in front of them and continue to talk. And I thought Jurassic Galaxy had pushed over Raptors. Also, the Acrocanthosaurus barn is labeled with a nickname even though there are two of them. Unless both of these are nicknamed Beth, why would you do that? Also, the movie seems to have no idea how big these Acrocanthosaurus are supposed to be. They go to the house of the sleazebag who runs the gas station and he gets killed by the T-Rex. And I gotta say, even though it looks bad, I have to give them credit for actually building a life-size T-Rex model. Not just the head, there is a full body attached and they're demolishing an actual set. This movie put in real visible effort. Well, until it reminds you that it's a trashy horror movie. 
Because the black girl gets eaten on the toilet, and the blonde girl gets killed while having sex. The survivors drive away with the bus until it breaks down in the town's main street. Okay, that part doesn't look very convincing, but the filmmakers clearly have an actual flipped over bus as their set, and they're moving it around. Considering I've seen movies that were so cheap, they couldn't even show a boat flipping over, this is borderline impressive. Unfortunately, we just get a more boring version of the T-Rex Jeep scene from Jurassic Park because this T-Rex doesn't notice the three people running out of the bus and then acts kinda half-assed at trying to get the one guy still inside. And then they do the fetch scene from Jurassic Park and it actually works? What? He did it? Even the character is dumbstruck by how stupid this is. How does the T-Rex not immediately break a fucking glass door? Earlier, it turned on an entire house. Luckily, it gets distracted by the other dinosaurs arriving. We could see an awesome all out dinosaur battle, but because that is too difficult to animate, we instead remain with the human characters. Also, are there no people at all in this town? Nobody else noticing several dinosaurs fighting in the streets? And I don't know when it happened, but for some reason, the goth girl seems to be on drugs now. Probably a Megalosaurus. Wait, Megalosaurus? What happened to Acrocanthosaurus? Did these writers even look at the same screenplay? It says that it was probably a matriarch. What kind of bullshit book is this? There's no way you would know that. Chill. When are you gonna grow up and be a man? Honestly, let's put our skis together, get off the bunny slopes, get on the big boy chair, and we're gonna go to the top of that mountain. What even is happening right now? For titties. The whole point, the whole objectives of this whole trip was to do what? Get a titty here and a titty here. And I'm not gonna let some little lizard out there stop me from getting titties. Why? Because I'm the titty man. Besides, they're extinct and they're stupid. We're human. We're men human. We're smarter. Ski buddy. Oh. What was the point of any of that? The spiky ferropod then wins the fight against the T-Rex because I guess nothing is original anymore. Also, the goth girl pretends to be fishing and lets the raptor inside. Wh why? Why would you ever behave like she's on drugs if you don't show the moment where she takes the drugs? Then it becomes daytime and they're still on the run from the blue ferropod. This weird time skip and the fact that the final confrontation of this movie is a boring chase for an abandoned slaughterhouse in the middle of nowhere kinda deflates the tension for me. Seems like the budget they spent on their life-size dinosaur models finally caught up with them. But hey, we're getting another scene where I can just show a Jurassic World clip to get a cheap reaction out of you viewers. The goth girl stumbles and instead of eating her, the dinosaur steps on her and the filmmakers were apparently so proud of this shitty effect that they're doing it again with the guy, but even worse. They're dragging this chase out longer than it needs to be until the girl finally ends up in a room with gas tanks. It's you and me, bitch. Go to hell. Oh come on, you couldn't even come up with a good one-liner. Oh yeah, these two assholes! I completely forgot they were even in this movie! They didn't contribute anything to the plot, they were just a waste of screen time. Anyway, anyway, the movie ends with our main girl now working as a singer in a different bar, but like any dumb horror movie, another raptor shows up and kills them all, I guess, so whatever. And that was Raptor Ranch. It is dumb and trashy and tongue-in-cheek. It's one of those movies where you know they had a ton of fun filming, but I didn't find it that fun to actually sit down and watch it. The CGI is absolutely awful, Full, but the practical effects are surprisingly impressive. Production quality wise it can certainly only go downwards from here. Jurassic Predator aka Primeval Predator is the worst dinosaur movie made by British people. British? The best thing in Jurassic Predator is the first 10 seconds. And then the movie starts. The first 8 minutes is just to establish our badass hero by showing him foil like robbery in a coffee shop. Maybe I wouldn't mind how long and boring this supposedly suspenseful scene is if the whole movie wasn't only 78 minutes long, of which 11 minutes are just the credits, because they show every single participant's name by itself. You can do this shit if it's a big blockbuster where every single one of those names is a recognizable Hollywood talent, but not when they're all nobodies, 
several of which were in just one or two scenes. If there's one thing that you will quickly notice with this movie, it's how it is stalling for time. We get a slow ass text scroll explaining that scientists made a T-Rex, and we see long conversations between scientists and military people about whether the dinosaur is too dangerous to be kept alive. Of course they just used the Jurassic Park bra, they're not even trying to hide it. Sound design and sound mixing my ass. The T-Rex is only attached to a flimsy chain, so of course it immediately escapes. Maybe they should have kept it in a better secured facility than the local school laboratory. This movie is so cheap, even turning off the lights has to be done through editing. Ah yes, please show me all those well-made guts props in detail. A government agent hires our hero to track down the T-Rex. Thankfully, the research facility is surrounded by acres of rural territory, far from any residential or commercial properties, but the longer the creature is out there, the more we risk it reaching towns or cities and... We don't have the budget to show a T-Rex attacking people in the city. Then our hero assembles his team of mercenaries. An unnecessary 10 minute montage because it's not like I'm gonna remember what any of these guys specialties or even names are. One guy gets to perform a whole rock song because again, you have to fill out time somehow. Hello, buddy. Hello, Redders, how you doing? Yeah, right. Why did you fade out from the end of the song into the exact same scene again? This is the kind of beginner's error that I thought even amateur movie makers would not make. Then we get a boring briefing scene where the mercenaries are bargaining for their payment, and again, this is so clearly just padding to fill out the runtime of the movie. You men have got a mission, and it's time sensitive. We're almost halfway through the movie, and we haven't done shit yet. We're not fighting for freedom. Oh my god, if you have a guy speaking quietly, don't put music over the scene that makes him inaudible. With this movie, I refuse to believe that any of the many people that apparently worked on it actually watched the finished product. We then get a scene of people trying to film a horror movie in the woods. What was wrong with that tape? What is wrong with that? Can't you see that monster? Look, I know your expectations were high, but on a low budget film. Expectations! On a low God. budget film, we have to compromise. Oh, you think you guys are so clever for sneaking in a little meta joke about low budget horror? You probably think your movie is now criticism proof because you acknowledge it, but guess what? It's not, because the major problems I'm pointing out have nothing to do with budget. Fading out and into the same scene, drowning out an actor's speech with music, stealing sound effects from Jurassic Park, dragging out the runtime with slow text, these are not the result of a lack of budget, but a lack of care. We get a better look at the T-Rex and yeah, of course it's a more obvious puppet than the life-size prop from Raptor Ranch. But at the same time, at least this one can actually open and close its jaws. But unfortunately, we never see any shot of it other than this. We get no frame of reference how big it is or how much of a body there even is attached to that neck and head. Oh my god, it's a creature, it's a creature. We're all filming a movie and, and this creature, is get out, there's a creature. Oh come on, there's no fucking reason for her to keep saying creature instead of dinosaur except to make these mercenaries look like fucking morons for not investigating that creature that is obviously the thing they were hired to search for. Listen to me, listen to me. You are safe. You are okay. How did the T-Rex sneak up on them? And this is supposed to be one of the best mercs? I like it, Kaji. Giving the creature good depth perception, but they can't see in a wider range of field. If we create our vantage points wide enough and create a central distraction, maybe we'll be able to corner the son of a bitch. Oh, they are assuming the T-Rex operates on the same logic as the people it killed, but it can only see things that are directly in front of it, which obviously backfires for them. Wow, he shot his own man, what expert mercenaries. We've done all we can here, mate. Wow, you waved the gun around for 10 seconds, but truly you were the only guy for this job. Then we get a long scene of our protagonist telling some story about the horrors of the Afghanistan war, and man, the actor is going for it. You're in a low budget movie called Jurassic Predator. It's not worth it. They're not gonna watch your performance anyway, based on how little attention they pay to the rest of the movie. As the T-Rex approaches, an attack helicopter shows up and just blows it up. What a fucking letdown. Getting rid of any witnesses, mate. 
Well, luckily that's clearly stock footage of abandoned buildings, so there's no witnesses to worry about anyway. Also, that's it? Really? The T-Rex just immediately wiped out? Not even by our protagonists? No, fuck you movie. You don't create such a trashy Papo Rex cover and then attempt to end it with some message about the military's war crimes or something like that. The actual last scene is the two guys confronting the government agent and the editor does the same audio volume mistake again. Now, when I said on the count of three I'm gonna shoot you, that was a threat. When I shot you, it became a fact. Oh, excuse me, the actual, actual last scene shows that the professor's creating more dinosaurs. And then they play the exact same music when the credits start. So clearly this scene was supposed to lead to the credits. But no, they fucked over their own editing pace to squeeze in a bad horror movie cliche. What the fuck is this credit song anyway? Apparently this is by a band called the Mescalito Vampires. And since the credits are 11 minutes long, we get to hear two of their songs in their entirety. And that was Jurassic Predator. I hated it. And how obvious it was that this movie was just stretching out runtime to create something to be put onto a disc with an attention grabbing DVD cover. Well, I can't wait for what the final movie of this video is gonna be. There's no way it could be first, right? Right? Saurians is the worst dinosaur movie of all time. And I haven't even watched it! The most notable thing about this movie is that its shitty poster has not only the Papo Rex, but another stock dinosaur classic, the T-Rex model by Dino Raul. Raul Lunia actually passed away last year, and it's really sad that his art will probably be more remembered through the association with cheap cash grabs like this. His models don't even show up in the movie itself, because guess what? The movie was made in 1994 and just gets continuously redistributed with new posters. You wanna know what this movie looks like? Here. I mean, this has to be a joke, right? This is someone's home video. This cannot be called the worst dinosaur movie because it is not even a movie. And yet, it seems to be on Amazon, which in my eyes means it does count as a movie and thus can be rightfully called the worst dinosaur movie of all time. But I don't have Amazon Prime so I cannot check that. I guess I will just have to believe this customer's review. They were puppets. But they were lizards. That's deep, man. Now. When you're looking at this clip, you might notice the awful sound editing, the out of place music, the shitty dinosaur puppet that isn't even trying to resemble a dinosaur, the random cutaway gore effects, the awkward flailing around in a car, and think to yourself, why does this seem familiar? Well, because this movie was directed by Mark Polonia, the same guy who made Jurassic Prey. That's right. For over two decades, this guy has made and distributed incomprehensibly awful horror movies. And the only thing that has improved over this time span is the quality of the cameras used for filming. Again, it's like poetry. Mark Polonia has made lots of cheap movies, from Jurassic Prey to Dune World to uh Amogus. <laughs> and finally, oh no. <laughs> Jurassic Shark is the only trilogy that defies the laws of space and time. The first Jurassic Shark movie was made in 2012, the second one was made in 1998 and the third one in 2002. That's because this German DVD box is a fucking lie. They just took two random shark movies and re-released them under the Jurassic Shark name. You should never fall for such an obvious trick because these movies are pretty much scams. If a DVD has three horror movies you've never heard of, it doesn't mean they're going to be good horror movies. Oh my god, one DVD with nine movies, what a fucking bargain! The German Jurassic Shark trilogy now gets muddled with Mark Polonia's Jurassic Shark 2. Cause this is not a re-release, this really is a completely new movie that continues the story of the original Jurassic Shark movie. Even though Polonia did not direct that one, so I have no idea if the sequel is officially approved. Or can any hack fraud with a camera just film 70 minutes of filler and release it as a Jurassic Shark movie? Could I make one? What was the plot of the first Jurassic Shark again? It's too deep. You're drilling too deep. No! You drilled too deep! Too deep? We, we drilled too deep. Oh yeah, that was it. 
What's the plot of this one? They dug down too deep. We are increasing the speed and the depth of the drilling. To keep the drilling at peak pace. It has to be eradicated so the drilling can continue. Okay. The movie opens 50 million years ago, which fun fact neither T-Rex nor Megalodon existed at that point. So we get to see the stupid opening from Steve Alton's cringe ass garbage edgelord trash mag novel being adapted with all the respect it deserves. Then we cut to present day through a stock montage of Bikini Babe so Mark Bologna has something to jerk off to. At first I thought this fake shark fin was supposed to be a swimmer pretending to be a shark, but no, that is supposed to be the actual shark. And based on its vision I guess it's fucking drunk. Oh come on, you're not even trying with the effects. Seriously, the shit is endearing when it's a little kid making the movie, not a grown ass man. Well, at least their Megalodon shark isn't just a stock model of a great white shark. That's an interesting look they got there with the stripes and the wrinkles. And oh wait, this is just a fucking Megalodon model from Ark Survival Evolved. Good job, Digital Pixel! You really deserve all the credit for this one. Every fucking Melodon attack also looks the same. Just bad CGI footage and jaw close up with shaky cam of a screaming girl and the least convincing biting sound effects you can imagine. And if you thought the effects were embarrassing, well the acting is even worse. Not long if he doesn't get back to scrum in the dark. Hey Mr. Light. Don't hide me, what are you doing? This shark is one tough son of a bitch. It's an animal. And all animals bleed and die. That bitch. She'll regret poking around in our affairs if she continues spreading those stories. I think the sailor actor in particular is just taking the piss out the entire time and Mark is too dim with it to notice. Well someone left a monster bowel movement in the men's room that needs unclogging. The shark is monitored by people and somehow kept secret even though this is a populated harbor. And the workers on the oil rig are the same actors as the criminals from Jurassic Prey. Look at the size of that shark! Man, imagine if they would actually show the shark with something for scale instead of it being disconnected stock footage. But that would require effort. What's going into you, kid? Then do you even grasp the concept of scale, Mark? Do you realize why this gigantic shark cannot simply pop up like that with only the black guy noticing it? Think, Mark! Time to test this baby out. What the fuck kind of movie scene is this? A two and a half minutes long montage of this creep stalking women in bikinis and taking pictures of them? Who the fuck is this for, Mark? If you wanna make a film for perverts, just make a fucking porno and keep your voyeur fetish shit out of your shark horror movie. You sicken me. You truly sicken me. I see you still give no fucks about frames overlapping in your movies either. That's like poetry. Oh, hi, Mark. Sharks can get pretty big, especially if they're the alpha male. Okay, it's amazing how wrong you can be in a single line. First of all, female sharks are usually bigger than males. Second, the concept of alpha males in wolves has been dismissed even by the original author of that study. And third, why the fuck would the social behavior of sharks be like that of wolf packs? Sharks were 60 feet long in the Jurassic times, but not today. Again! The Megalodon shark is not from the Jurassic, but I guess if this movie was called Miocene Shark, it would not make as much cash. Jurassic life died out with a mass extinction. Dinosaurs died out. Whales, sharks, alligators, they're older than the dinosaurs and they're still alive. True. What? Okay, Mark, please never write a horror movie with prehistoric monsters ever again. Scale! Size difference! Please, Mark! You clearly just wanted to make a generic shark movie without actually taking a Megalodon's size into account. As awful as the other Jurassic Shark movie was, at least they had some scenes showing how big it is compared to the humans. The two guys decide to get a stolen painting that was left behind during the events of the first movie. And I completely forgot that plot point even existed. And because I haven't suffered enough already, I get to hear that awful music from Jurassic Prey again. Poetry. The shark makes them drop a flare onto their boat and they casually jump out of it. At this point, I am speechless. I am fucking speechless. What? Why is there suddenly a bad shark puppet for only this one shot? What? Swim for that island. 
Other survivors may have made it to the island too. Oh yeah, this is clearly an island close to the shore. Just look at that smooth ass mirror surface. What? 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 The water is like two inches deep. How the fuck can a shark get it close? Mark, just because you are mentally defective does not mean your audience is. A few more feet and that thing would have beached itself. The fucking shark would have beached itself as soon as it tried to follow you into this area. Remember the Suez Canal? Damn. Wait for it. How do you not notice your reflection in those giant ass sunglasses? Mark, please. I'm not asking for much. I'm asking for the bare minimum. Well, all pretense is gone now. The shark just straight up crawled around on land, which to be fair, is what it's probably been doing for the last 10 minutes anyway. No way! Baby shark eggs! What?! Sharks don't lay eggs. Species does. M maybe it's part reptile. Jesse. What the fuck are you talking about? Okay, let's unravel this. First of all, sharks don't lay their eggs on land because they're gill-breathing fish. Second, shark eggs don't look like chicken eggs, they look like weird alien bags. And third, big sharks like Megalodon don't lay eggs to begin with. Instead, the embryos hatch inside the mother's womb and feed on their unborn siblings. In fact, there's been a study on the growth rings of a Megalodon's vertebrae, which shows that even a freshly born Megalodon would already be 2 meters long. Think about what a badass scene you could create out of this! You get a bunch of people investigating a dead Megalodon and trying to dissect it, and then one of them gets killed by the fetus still living inside. It sounds a thousand times more creative than anything this movie could come up with. You're gonna bleed alright! All you are doing is putting the Ark Megalodon in front of the screen without putting any thought into how big the shark would be compared to the humans or how it would interact with the fucking boat. Anyway, the two guys shoot the shark and the movie ends. Jurassic Shark 2 is so awful it managed to accomplish the impossible. It made me appreciate whatever filmmaking there was in the first Jurassic Shark movie. This piece of shit is so half-baked it does not even deserve to be called shit. It is pre-digestive shit. This movie is vomit. Mark Polonia should be charged with hate crimes against movie making. So if this guy can make unwatchable garbage for 30 years and distribute it, then anyone can make a movie. Making movies is easier than it's ever been. So, that's it. I guess I have to give a final statement on these films. Raptor Ranch is clearly the most amount of effort put into it, and it tries the hardest to be a fun, trashy cult movie, but for me personally, it tried to be funny and ended up being not funny, so watching it feels just awkward. Jurassic Galaxy on the other hand, that movie tries to be serious and fails, making it much more hilarious for me. So I think I enjoyed Jurassic Galaxy more. Obviously neither of these reached the genuine enjoyment I get out of Jurassic games, but I guess I would recommend them if you're specifically looking for a bad trashy dinosaur horror movie. Jurassic Predator and Jurassic Shark 2 Aquapocalypse on the other hand, no. They are unwatchable. The former is too boring and the latter will turn your brain into a vegetable. I need to recover from these movies. So whatever I review next cannot be worse. Who knows what it'll be? We will see.